Hello and welcome back guys, this is Ibrahim Qureshi here and welcome to my first session on vSphere 7 training and uh, today we are going to cover quite a lot of interesting topics if you are joining me for the first time my name is Ibrahim Qureshi my Twitter handle is Ibrahim, at the rate Ibrahim Qureshi as you can see here I'm a vExpert 2019 and vExpert 2020 my website is agileops.co.uk don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and uh, don't forget to like my videos so give a thumbs up guys um, so i know that you guys are liking the content which i'm creating and i can create more content for you guys so this session again is fully dedicated for beginners if you're a beginner in vmware don't need to worry i'm going to take you from basics to uh, advanced level if you have any questions by all means you can comment on below and uh, we can have a chat and i can obviously uh, if time permits, if I have enough gathering, we can do some live sessions. Uh, I'm planning to do some live uh, say, uh, live sessions as well, where you can have an opportunity to ask uh, question and answers. So let's see how it goes. Um, so let's get started, guys. So course content, if you haven't seen the full agenda, I have done a video previously. Um, just find the link below and you'll see the complete ad agenda. How I have designed this course is I have designed it in eight modules. Today's module is going to be introduction to Vs uh, virtualization and VMware. So let's dive into it. Um, as I said, this today is the introduction one. So we'll look into what is virtualization and we'll look into overview of hypervisors, which is type one and type two hypervisors. Before jumping into that, what is virtualization? So we all have been hearing about virtualization since a decade now, and uh, we know it's the most effective way to run a business um, I think most of the organization are using virtualization but I will tell you something that um, it's nothing but basically creating a virtual application or a virtual server so it's basically creating a software based representation of something that's what virtualization means so with that in mind VMware has done a really brilliant jo job in virtualizing the physical computer which is uh, a physical hardware server or a computer let's say to a virtual machine so over here you have applications which are virtualized we have servers which will be virtualized we can see storage virtualized and network virtualized so it doesn't matter whether you're a small business or a big business you need to consolidate your IT budget you need to consolidate your servers you need to um, start thinking smarter and work in more efficiently so this is why a virtualization and VMware can help you with that so with that in mind let's move on so what are the different types of virtualization we have server virtualization we have network virtualization and storage virtualization and again obviously we have another type like desktop virtualization which is for you know end users end user computing in today's day and age when we have you know working from home most of the time so it's like desktop virtualization we can call it um, which is for end user um, so server virtualization enables multiple operating system to run on a single physical server as a highly effective virtual machine so that's what uh, that that is what server virtualization is and with that basically you get a lot of benefits you get server consolidation you get better performance you get uh, time to manage less resources because you have less physical servers you're consolidating all those physical servers so there's a lot of benefits with that and what is network virtualization again network virtualization is uh, reproducing physical network yeah and network virtualization allows applications to run on a virtual network as if it were running on a physical network but with greater option operational benefit and all the hardware independencies of virtualizations okay so uh, it represents uh, logical network devices like uh, services you can well wh what does physical network comprise it has switches and you have routers firewalls so all that can be virtualized so the VMware product which basically helps you do that is NSXT. The previous version was called NSXT. Let's not dive into this much because obviously we are going to look at compute size which is server virtualization. But before jumping into that, the last topic was uh, storage virtual virtualization. So this is achieved by virtualizing the storage. You have virtual SAN, virtual volumes, 
and then VMware allows you to do policy based storage so that, that that's all side of virtual uh, storage and then you don't have uh, the main thing which I didn't write here is the virtual disk so you have a virtual disk and they sit on the storage so they are decoupled this virtual disk is decoupled with the uh, actual storage which allows you to be more uh, independent okay guys don't worry if you're beginners I know I have been talking and using some phrases which are you know more technical you will you will get those phrases you will uh, get used to those terminology because um, I'm going to talk you through all these uh, step by step there are quite a lot of topics which we will be covering um, but okay let's slow down now and we'll look into the history of the servers so let let me give you some idea so history of servers we found in the past decade that 90% of the servers which we commission we don't use them to the fullest resources so you spend five grand buying a server Dell HP I don't care whichever server it is a server at the end has let me get my pointer out uh, let's say okay <clears throat> at the end of the day the server has a physical uh, CPU and uh, memory it has hard drives it has network card so it has all the resources and uh, above all it has an operating system which is running on top right which is Windows or Linux so you got a server and throughout the lifespan which we rightfully say we have a right of a, of a server for five years so basically in the time we commission the server till its right off date which is five years most of the time we see that only 30% or 40% of the resources are used so the the CPU is only used up to 40% or memory is used till you know 30 to 40% and not more than that so that's a waste of resources uh, and also uh, another thing is more servers we commission in our data center that basically uses the space in the data center that uses uh, you know that uh, rises the carbon footprint so if we virtualize our servers on this same physical server what we'll do is we'll instead of installing this OS uh, Windows we will be installing a hypervisor now what is a hypervisor hypervisor emulates a physical machine to a virtual machine so instead of creating a physical machine you'll create a virtual machine and here you will be installing you would be installing uh, operating system like Windows or Linux you'll be using a, uh, a hypervisor like ESX excuse my handwriting there well it's vSphere ESX so obviously let's let's say ESX here so what that allows you to do is run multiple virtual machine on top of this hypervisor so in, instead of one machine running you know one ser server one windows server you can have this server running windows this server running linux and then this server running windows so you're consolidating all the servers on a physical server this can be running linux um so this basically r running the hypervisor bare metal hypervisor like esx on top of uh the physical server is called type 1 hypervisor so now we are swiftly diving into another topic which is different types of hypervisors but what this is allowing you to do is you're not no longer having uh, one two three four servers running in your environment you have you can easily you know uh, virtualize these three servers and run it here or you can create virtual machines instead of buying these physical servers so you're saving carbon footprint here um, you're saving electricity you're saving cooling which is like uh, running your AC uh, cost there and electricity cost for running your AC and you're saving a lot of space in your data centers which is also not cheap these days right okay let's dive into the next slide which we'll discuss uh, a little bit more so as I was saying we have this server here so we'll be having multiple VMs running on this and of course we'll not be having Windows or Linux it will be ESX let's run right neatly here whoops ESXi which is 
the hypervisor from VMware. This allows you to basically use the CPU and memory whenever it needs. Um, and then these are the memory, right? This is memory, this is CPU. And this server needs it, it will give it CPU and memory whenever it needs. So, and then all these will be basically uh, using the resources as and when they need. So these are all virtual machines. They are using the CPU and memory when they need them. Okay. So this is a bold part uh, explanation, but um, you get the idea. So obviously instead of having four servers as we have here, we'll be running one server and all these virtual machines can run. And how many virtual machines can we run? Well, we, it depends on how, how you're configuring each one of these. So this can be running uh, four gig memory and two CPUs. This can be running you know 16 gig memory this can be running 8 gig memory and it also depends on how big this server is today in uh, today's aid it's not a question of having a uh, big server we can easily get a server with 256 gb ram yeah and 16 cores uh, hyper threading cpus so if you have this sort of configuration you can easily l run uh, you know multiple virtual machines with 16 gig memory or even 32 or even 64 gig memory and VMware is quite efficient in handling these sort of servers um, Hope that makes sense. So let's dive into a little bit uh, uh, a new topic which is um, covering different types of Hypervisors so overview of Hypervisor type 1 and type 2 so this what we are discussing here and our course which is related to VMware vSphere, it is actually the uh, hypervisor. So we ha and again, this it is the Type One bare metal hypervisor. So we can see an example here of a Type One hypervisor, which has um, example like ESX, as I just mentioned from VMware. We have Zen Server, and we have Hyper-V from Microsoft and KVM from Linux. So these are all Type One hypervisors. But the best of these production-proven um, technology which basically um, most of the companies use is ESX because uh, you get very little downtime, you have, you know, efficiency, efficiency, you have performance and everything with ESX server, which, which is right here, guys. Okay, and as you can see, this is a traditional server. You have CPU, memory, disk, and network, um, and you're running virtual machine on top of this. Now, what is a type 2 hypervisor, which is, so this, this one is type 1, yeah? Type 2 hypervisor basically is you are having your physical server and you are running your Windows OS or a Linux OS on top of it. You are using basically a software a emulator which basically is a hypervisor which is like um, VMware Workstation uh, or VirtualBox or uh, if you are running Linux you can have a, a version of uh, VMware Fusion there which basically is a type 2 hypervisor or a hosted hypervisor which we call and that basically is running on top of your OS which is here so you can see quite a few of the resources is given to the uh, this operating system and then once that is given this operating system is also running other application as you can see maybe you're running Skype you're running you know Citrix and you have this hypervisor and on this hypervisor you have two virtual machines running so the resources is basically shared around this platform which is the operating system here and then once this is use the resources only then it gives the resources to this hypervisor which in turns gives to these vms so the performance you can see it's going to be um less it's not going to be 100 percent uh, given to this op uh, operating system here whereas over here you you directly get the performance the uh, you know benefit of running the hypervisor over here type 2 is running uh, os already like a windows and linux this is why you get less performance well i wouldn't say less performance but obviously this is not more efficient why when you compare to performance and everything and this uh, bay metal hypervisor is is the best uh, hypervisor you can uh, use in your production environment okay um, so I think with that we will f uh, finish uh, our topic. This is other references which I uh, collected for the slide today. Um, so thank you for watching, guys. At the end of each session, I'll be asking you a question of the day. So uh, today's question of the day is: uh, What is Type One hypervisor? Is it hosted hypervisor or bare metal hypervisor? So comment on below and let me know, guys. 
my blog is agileops.co.uk and i have a subscription button there so if you subscribe you'll get latest post from me you'll be able to understand the topic more button better if you have any questions uh, i'll go in a little bit of more details if i missed anything on the session so be sure to do that and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell also be sure to give me thumbs up guys uh, like my video so that's the only way to find out whether you guys like it and uh, i'll be encouraged to create more content for you guys okay so enjoy watching and keep sharing cheers bye